Once you pop, the fun does not stop. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Think Different Podcast. All right, this is episode seven. I cannot believe it. We made it past six episodes. They said it couldn't be done, but we proved the critics wrong. I am Will V here at the Think Different Podcast, and of course, the co-host with the most, who's always ready to go on vacation, Vacation Tim. How you doing, Tim? Doing well. I didn't. Uh, I didn't go on vacation this weekend. Actually, Actually, I'm going on vacation was... in two weeks. Oh, yeah? Where are you going? I'm going to Florida to go to Daytona Beach to see my mother-in-law, my father-in-law, my brother-in-law, which I call my parents-in-law, in case you didn't know <laughs> that. And then we're going to go to Disney for a couple of days. But the cool thing is we're bringing our dog down. This is his first time in wow. the car. Wow. Yeah, he's going to have a nice car ride down. I Can you bring the dog the to thing. Disney? No, we're not going to bring him. He's going to stay at Daytona Beach. That's cool, though. How yep. far is Daytona Beach from Orlando? So it's only an hour and a half. So believe it or not, if you ever wanted to go to Daytona Beach and Orlando, they are an hour and a half apart. So That's it is not, not it is not far at all uh, to get to that. But what a big news this week! There's a lot of stuff going on this week, uh, Apple wise. Oh, We're yeah. getting ready because in a couple of weeks we have the big story, which is going to be the new iPhone most likely being announced, the Apple TV. There's a lot of stuff going on. This is the hot season for us, Tim. Yeah, it really is. It's and it's a fun season at that it is and by the way if you haven't yet if you are a college or a teacher get to the apple store apple online take advantage of the college deals where you get the free beats headphones it's probably the best value in years to get that so please don't forget we talked about that already but that is such a great deal that you do not want to miss right now so again it's for teachers or college students yeah a couple of friends have reached out to me and how it works and uh they've had very high success with it. Another thing is you don't actually have to go to the Apple store to do the uh, educational purchase. You can actually do it all online. Yep. And I'll be honest, they're very lean on the proof of things. Uh, Let's just say that. Very, very lenient. Very, very lenient. Basically, if you're like like an uncle, you could take advantage as long as you're like someone, if you bring someone that's not even related to you and they they give you the college deal, that you could use it. Honestly, it's really lenient. Before we get to the news, guys, we talked about last week an incentive to try to get you online to go to iTunes and leave a review. Well, we have that incentive. So here's how this is going to work, folks. We are looking for five-star reviews on iTunes. So all you have to do is go on our on the podcast, write a review, and screenshot before you send the review in. That way we can see it. If it's posted online, what we're going to do next week, we'll call out that name, and that person's going to win a $10 iTunes gift card. Ooh. Ooh. That's 10 months <laughs> of iCloud 50 gigs right there that you can have. So that's what we're going to do. So again, you're going to go to iTunes. You're going to go look up our podcast, write a review before you send that button. Make sure you take a screenshot, send that to the think different pod at gmail.com. And then we will announce the winner next week and you will be mailed a $10 iTunes gift card. Again, that's a uh, think different pod at gmail.com. Um, and who doesn't like free stuff? I like free stuff. Yep, we want to entice people to come on and join us, our journey, grow our channel. And this was a great way we thought we had to give back to the people who are listening to us, even though you probably work for Apple. So we're <laughs> going to do that anyway. And I just also want to point out is uh, this will only be a U.S. customer uh, contest, um, so we cannot ship internationally. Um, so this could be only be U.S. based. Thank you very much. I, 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 I see people make that mistake before. Yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> so throw that out I'm there. sorry. To my folks in England, I love you, but we just have no way. <laughs> or to, to do our this. listeners in Germany, <laughs> we we just have no way Germany. of getting it to you. So, j- our customers in Finland, we just have no way to get it to you. <laughs> cool, folks in Japan. I don't even know how you even listen to us because you can't probably understand what we're saying. All right, <laughs> they speak so, English. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. All right, let's get to the news. <laughs> Jennifer Aniston, Steve Carell, and Reese Witherspoon star in first trailer for The Morning Show. The first trailer for Apple TV's highly anticipated series, The Morning Show, is here. Apple dropped the first trailer for the upcoming series, which follows the dynamics and backstage drama involved with producing daytime network news. The Morning Show will debut on Apple TV Plus this fall. What a cast. Like... To, to get those top three actors and actresses to star in a show together, and actually Jennifer Aniston and Reese Witherspoon are 
executive producing it as well. I encourage everybody to watch the trailer. It'll be posted on our website at thinkdifferentpodcast.com. It looks high quality. I'm very excited for it. They're using the Matt like Laura case because Steve Carell's character gets fired for something, which we don't. I don't think we really know what it is, but it's kind of similar to allegations and then they bring on Reese Witherspoon on to the show and there's a competition between Jennifer Aniston I'm not gonna lie I'm not too excited about this show really I, I, I'm not I, I, I don't it looks great like as far as like the filming of it it looks phenomenal oh yeah uh, that part I like I just don't know if I'm gonna be emotionally invested into the story of it trailer did not catch me the the one trailer that has always that's caught me is the one the space one because that one's like oh yeah they're, they're altering time for where the Russians actually got to the moon before we did. So they're kind of altering the universe. I like when shows like change time mm -hmm. and what could have happened if someone else got to something first. So for the right. morning show, for me, I'm not feeling it yet. You know, uh, I think the biggest news coming out of that, the fact that the Apple TV is rumored to be $9.99 a month. And I don't know if Apple's going to pull this off. I just don't see it. Yeah, Sorry. especially with Disney Plus coming out. Disney um, Plus come out at the same time for cheaper, yeah. and they're giving you so much stuff. But Apple TV's got it's only got their own stuff, you know. But these shows have to be like the best shows ever. Like they have to be. You gotta you gotta think about this, like the whole first mover versus late mover thing. You know, Netflix was the first mover into this whole original content, but Hulu came very late to the game. But Hulu has started producing really, really well done original content and it's almost taking a step over netflix right now apple being this kind of late mover movement the, as long as the shows are high quality and very well done you know has the accolades of the actors and actresses the directors whole nine yards it could make a staple um just like how hulu's currently making the staple but again like it's going to be very hard with disney plus creating all this excitement around marvel and star wars and Pixar, which I'm very excited for, all the Pixar shorts and the new Pixar stuff that's coming out. It's going to be an awesome time for television in the fall. I'm just going to be throwing away all my money. <laughs> yeah, this is honestly going to be, I think Apple's the underdog here. I, I honestly feel like this is yeah. kind of like a really rare occasion where they're the underdog. And I think that to make it sexy, they're going to have to combine bundles together to make it work. So, you know, that, that to me is the only way this works, is if they combine some kind of bundle that is able to make it attractive. iOS beta leaks September 10th unveiling of the iPhone 11, not the iPhone 10 yep. or X or whatever you call it. <laughs> like I butchered it last week. Apple released the latest beta of iOS 13 to developers and it is a piece of evidence that suggests we might see Apple's iPhone 11 event. An asset with the new iOS 13 beta suggests an event date of September 10th. They do it all the time though. Every time that you know, a beta comes out, there's always a hidden code in there that talks about the date. And September 10th, I'll be away on vacation on that day. Usually the, usually they try to make their event always that first Tuesday of like the second week of the month. Um, last year they didn't make it on the f that Tuesday because it was September 11th. So they had it on the Wednesday, I believe. But usually always the event is expected to be on that the Tuesday. Yep, so expect that to happen September 10th. Uh, that is the expected date that we are going to see the new iPhone or the new watch, you know, every Apple TV. So we're going to see all that probably then. So here we go. Let's get ready. Apple Card launches today for all U.S. customers. Will did it before me. I did it yesterday when it originally came out on uh, mm -hmm. August 20th. And let me tell you guys, it was the easiest Thing it was so easy. I've ever done. It was so I went easy. into my wallet app, I clicked the plus button on the top, and I hit uh, Apple apply for Apple Card. And then I entered in my information, I scanned my license, I entered in my like uh, finance information, signed a couple documents, submitted, and I was approved within minutes. It literally took minutes to apply for this. And you immediately get your card. You can immediately use your Apple new Apple Card right away after you get approved. So I have my titanium card coming in the mail. I'm very excited to use that. I used it for the first time today in Wawa for my lunch at work. Just like how I love Apple Wallet in general, it's just so easy to double click on the side of my watch and pay uh, virtually. It's just, I am so excited. What's really cool about the Apple Card, not only will you get 3% back when you buy Apple products and use it on apple.com's website, they're also expanding their merchants that they're gonna be having that same kind of deal for for the 3% daily cash back. 
currently right now they actually have it with Uber and Uber Eats, mm -hmm. which funny enough is actually better than the Uber credit card because the Uber yeah. credit card is only two percent. I did so yes, that is that's really hilarious. Funny. That is really <laughs> funny. It makes absolutely no sense. That makes them look really stupid. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, <laughs> it really but, does. But yeah, so I I did use the Apple Card myself, you know, and I did get the titanium card. I sent that to Tim. It's a pretty heavy card. I, I, again, it, there's no point in using that card. <laughs> no. I'm not gonna. I mean, it, it, you get the the worst possible money back for it. So there's just no way that works to me. Because you only get one percent uh, back, right? You only get one percent. I mean, what's yeah. the point in using it? But the wallet app is great. It changes color when you use it. Uh, for an example, I went to Seven Eleven. I upgraded my iCloud storage, and now my card is a mixture of purple and, and uh, orange. And because it's a iCloud is an Apple service, you get three percent back balance. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, you That's gotta cool. remember that. Yeah, so you gotta remember that that using Apple Pay is going to be the best. Uh, benefit for you, and then the money goes into your Apple, uh, your Apple Cash. So, right now I have a total of sixteen cents. All right, <laughs> I probably have like five cents. Sixteen cents, baby. I'm on, I, I'm on We're the going rise. far, boys. <laughs> yeah. So if if you haven't signed up for it, uh, do it. I haven't seen too many people not get accepted for it. There have been some people that didn't, but most people have got accepted. You know, I got a nice credit rating on that, so I know yep. that next time I'm gonna go to the Apple Store to buy something with uh, hopefully uh, some of my friends that are listening right now, uh, discount, uh, <laughs> uh, then I could use the Apple card to pay for it. Apple Arcade games leaked in hands-on video ahead of fall launch. Apple Arcade is set to launch this fall, providing iPhone, iPad, Mac, and Apple TV users with access to a library of over 100 games on a subscription basis that includes no ads or additional in-app purchases. This uh, subscription is actually going to start out at four ninety nine a month, which is actually a really, really cheap price, surprisingly, for a lot of these. If you watch the video that leaked, which will also be posted on our website at thinkdifferentpodcast.com, they're actually like high-quality videos. There's, they're doing a rendition of Frogger. They have a game called Down in Bermuda, Hot Lava, Kings of the Castle, and it just goes on. Um, what's really cool about it that I really like is let's say you're playing a game on your iPhone. But then later on, you want to play the same game, but let's say on a bigger screen. You can also access the Apple Apple Arcade from any of your other devices. So now you could play on Apple TV, and it could pick up right where you left off on your iPhone. That is just so cool. It's that whole, you know, ecosystem of the Apple products that connect together. Um, I just love that. It's it's a great touch. You know, for four ninety nine, I was a little surprised. I was like, I thought that would be like nine ninety nine, but no, they they. Uh, you know, yeah, I thought it was yeah so I honestly, know, for well. if you're going to get 100 games, they just need one really good game in there to make it worth it. But if they can get a couple in there, you know, I definitely, if there's a trial, I definitely will give it a shot. I'm not a game guy on my iPhone, I'm not going to lie. It's just not really my style. I, I'm too, I do like the Nintendo game. Yeah. I, I just something about Nintendo, just an Xbox that really gets me. Uh, so I haven't really gotten hands on. But if they create like really, really good games, like if they can create like a Fortnite style game on there i i see it working yeah like this is the on, one this is a service i think that could work for oh yeah that's it for news but i did want to share one other thing just from a personal experience that kind of connects back from our episode last week when we talked about experiences in the apple store i recently bought my girlfriend an apple watch for her birthday thanks for hey. a discount from former apple employees and i got an email yesterday titled get even more from your new apple watch and then it says, see for yourself with an online personal session. It goes into this whole email about, you know, give us 30 minutes and we can help you discover some amazing things about your new Apple Watch Series 4 and many of its innovative features. And so then you can write in the email, you can actually schedule your session and then actually tells you what you're going to explore with the uh, person online. Um, I just think this is super cool. And, you know, it was about, I mean, I think three or four weeks after I purchased it. So it recognizes that you... They want you to use the product first, you know, get acclimated with it, and then it invites you to, you know, find out more information or find out how you can fully utilize your your watch and kind of gain feedback from you with these sessions. I thought that was super cool. It's just a nice touch. I wanted to share that with with our listeners because you can have some something like that of a personal experience as well. 
And they've been doing that for a while. So anybody that's not used to the watch and doesn't have time to go to the Apple store and set it up, uh, even if, even in the store, if you set it up, you're not going to get the full experience. You need to have an online session to get the full experience out of it. Even I don't even use the Apple watch for what I know it could do more of. And, and that just, that's kind of a shame on me. Like an example, I could listen to my podcast right on my watch or my music, but somehow I just gradually just go to my phone and do it. And I don't know why it's just like, I could, I, I'm getting used to the fact that the watch can do more. But that's going to end our news today. Thank you, Tim, for that personal story. But now it's time to get to uh, the main thing we're going to talk about today. It's kind of a piggyback off the last two episodes. We talked about the Genius Bar journey, which led into reviews. And now we're going to talk about the terms and conditions. Every single customer that goes to the Genius Bar and has a repair or replacement has to sign this agreement. And now we're going to break it down. I don't think anybody that I can remember has broken down these terms and conditions like we were about to do. So stay tuned because we're about to get to the Apple retail store terms and conditions. I told my Apple Care that I could walk in the store and get the part. All right, guys, we're going to break down the Apple store Genius Bar terms and conditions. This is something that after every repair or replacement, you do have to sign an agreement. So let's start off right away. The very first sentence. So Apple will service your product as described and for the charges shown on the work authorization plus any applicable tax. Apple may restrict service to one product per customer during your visit to the Apple retail store. When the service is covered by Apple's warranty, Apple understands that your data may be valuable to you. Data loss during service is always a possibility and in some cases data may be unrecoverable, erased or reformatted during service. For this reason, it is your sole responsibility to back up all existing data, software, or programs from your product and decide whether to erase any such data from your product prior to receiving service. Apple is not responsible for loss, recovery, or compromise of data, software, or programs, or loss of use of your product or other equipment arising out of the services provided by Apple. You represent that your product does not contain any legal files or data. You acknowledge that your device may be sent out for a common carrier to be serviced by an external service provider. For this reason, it is recommended that you back up your device and wipe it prior to submission of service. There's a lot to take in that one. Yeah, I never, yeah. I never heard of that last part. If oh yeah, I've, if it's going to be sent out to a common carrier, to external service provider, you have to back up your device and wipe it. So yeah, so remember, first thing I want to break down: one product per customer. That I can't tell you how many times how annoying that oh, is. Yeah. That people came in with multiple products under one appointment. That's not how it works. And I'm, yeah. and I was usually pretty good at correcting that. So that's, in my opinion, I think I was good at correcting that. Also. That the fact that Apple understands your data is valuable to do, data loss could occur during service. There was an agreement that we had people sign prior to that for the repair. Because sometimes people, we don't send them the terms and conditions because there's nothing to sign. They understand that anytime we did like any diagnostics or anything, you could lose data. But again, the main thing on this one, and we probably say it almost every episode, you are responsible to back up your stuff. Yep. Apple is not. Yep. I don't know how many times I could, you know, talk about that. Also that... Apple tells you that hey we're gonna be we could be sending this out for service and that happens with a lot of Macs and a lot of times they're gonna be wiped especially these 2016 MacBook Pros and above because the solid state drive is soldered to the board so you're guaranteed an erase if the logic board's got to be changed this this is extremely important when people skip this you know again people are gonna say oh that genius didn't tell me about it well it's in the terms and conditions you know people say that they don't read this but you have to read it. You know, that's why we're doing this now. All right, Tim. Yeah, next one. All right. Section two. If service is needed due to failure of parts that are not original to the product or due to damage caused by abuse, misuse, or external cause, Apple reserves the right to return the product to you without servicing it and may hold you responsible for any indicated diagnostic fee. Apple will not be responsible for any damage to the product that occurs during the repair process that is a result of any unauthorized modifications or repairs or replacements not performed by Apple or an authorized Apple service provider. 
If damage results, Apple will seek your authorization for any additional costs for completing service even if the product is covered by warranty or an Apple Care service plan. If you decline authorization, Apple may return your product unrepaired in the damaged condition without any responsibility. So as a genius admin, I saw this a lot and I had to have yeah, a lot of these that, that, tough conversations. That's why, that's why this sentence was good for you. Yeah. You um, had to make the calls. So let's say let's say that you uh, have an iPhone 6 and instead of getting the screen replaced with within an Apple service provider or an Apple and you get it fixed at like iFixit or some stand in the mall for a cheaper rate and then you come into the Apple store for to replace your Apple battery because your battery needs to be replaced and during the repair the genius or the technician accidentally breaks the screen finds out that it's a third party screen mm-hmm. we can actually attempt to put the broken screen back on have you come pick it up and then say hey your screen is cracked due to repair because it's third party we cannot replace it for you but we can replace it for you if you if you pay for the replacement cost of the screen or you can decline it at the pickup now this seems like something that is like wow like apple broke it they should pay for it yes right. but in this agreement if it's not an genuine apple part we are not responsible for the product um yeah, so that that is huge that. to know so i can tell you right now the genius bar that was something that if we could we i'll be honest geniuses know when you have a third party screen they, they know because they can see it and it's very obvious sometimes especially yeah. like if there's like a certain tint to the screen like a bluish tint you could tell it's a modified device what this is saying is that one of the responsibilities as a genius is to tell people hey We'll try the repair, but if this doesn't work or there's any other modifications or liquid damage, we're going to put the original screen back on and we may damage it while we open it. Yep. You know, honestly, Apple protects us in these work authorizations. But one thing I hated from a management standpoint, and I never understood this, this protects us even if we don't say it. Am I right or am I wrong? No, no you're completely right. So why would management side with a customer because we didn't say it? You know? I, I always said, to, I saw, I told every customer, you if you do read these terms and conditions, you know, if something happens, likely it's going to be mentioned in here. You know, a lot of times we had to say it just to say we said it. But to be honest, people still would come back and say, oh, he never said that. Yeah, that's just like people get want to get what they want. Um, but I think it went case by case, specifically for the store that we worked in. I, I always said this protected me no matter if I did something wrong or not, because the, the oh, terms I agree are with right you. there. Part of the service, Apple may install a system software updates that will prevent your Apple product from reverting to an earlier version of the system software. Third-party applications installed on your Apple product may not be compatible to work with your Apple product as a result of the system software update. Now, that's going to be a big thing because, remember, the next operating system coming out is going to stop supporting legacy products that are not optimized for the Mac. They've been, they've been up, you know, they're allowing these apps to stay aboard and working but the reality is they're going to stop i can tell you right now i probably have at least four or five six apps that are not going to work with the next os operate yeah remember flappy bird <laughs> yeah flappy bird yeah yeah <laughs> so there's a lot of examples out there even like older versions of photoshop cs6 is not going to work on the next upgrade so i can tell you this is going to be bigger than ever the next operating system when it comes out and that's coming out in a matter of months. So, yeah. to, and, and to be honest, you know, people sometimes want to go backwards. And there is some Macs that can go backwards. But if you are if you were running, you know, Mac OS and Mavericks and you're going to be upgraded to Mojave, that's five years of a change. Yeah, that's big. There's a lot of things that change. And a lot of people come to the Genius Bar and we're that far behind. They never upgraded the Opera because they didn't know how to do it. You know, so the reality is that that happens. So I'm, I fully get that. If service requires labor and or parts not specified on the work authorization, Apple may seek your approval of a revised estimate. If you do not agree that Apple may revise the charges, Apple may return your product and hold you responsible for any indicated diagnostic fee. Uh, This is related to what I was describing before. Let's say, uh, again, another genius admin kind of duty was, uh, let's say we sent out a iPhone got screened and it needs to be sent out to Depot for further investigation and it gets sent out because it's having a wireless connectivity issue and then they open up the phone and they actually find water damage inside the phone. So now it's going to be requoted 
for a different cost and we had to acknowledge the customer of the new cost of the uh, product mm-hmm. because it wasn't actually written in the original work authorization. So you have the option to deny it or agree to it, but with the understanding that the original problem may not be fixed because of the ex- the other yeah. issues that populated. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to go back broken. And I'll be honest, Apple doesn't do a diagnostic fee, at least in the U.S. I don't recall. I think it's more so third-party Apple authorized service providers that might be I, I believe that you're exactly correct fee. with that. But Apple stores, I can tell you right now, because they use this work authorization for everywhere. Uh, so I can tell you right now, this is more third-party space, but I can tell you with Apple, they never turn to diagnostic fee. Yeah. I never see them do that. All right, so Apple may use parts or products that are new or equivalent to new in reliability and performance. We're going to talk about that in a second. Apple will retain the replaced part or product that is exchanged as its property, and the replacement part will become your property. Replaced parts are generally repairable and are exchanged or repaired by Apple for value. So this is important. This is a big one. Because everyone that came to a store and said, oh, is it new or refurbished? Well, in Article 5, it says that they are new or equivalent to new. Yep. Now, this wording has changed over the years that I've been part of Apple. At one point, they would say reconditioned. They would say yeah, refurbished. That. So they, this wording has changed since I've been a part of Apple. But I remember always saying refurbished at one point. But reconditioned was the word. Now it's equivalent to new. So... I, so if I was at the bar now and I saw that, because I, I would look at the terms and conditions from here and there, I would say, is it new or is it re- refurbished? I would say new or equivalent to new. Tim, explain what refurbished is. Refurbished is a product that was given in and it was previously used and owned and it has been tested and verified that it will work again and can be you know, re-sold re, uh, to uh, new customers. That means the battery's been used, the screen's been used. When you get a replacement phone, your screen's new, your battery's new, your outside casing's new. The only thing that may have been reused is a logic board. And if it's still like in a manufacturing, I guarantee you that it's still a new device. But if it's like an yeah. iPhone 6 or 6S, it's not lo- no longer made, I would likely say it's equivalent to new. So that just explains that, but please understand that Apple doesn't do refurbished products. And Tim's going to talk about the next sentence, which ties into that. Yeah, but I I just want to point out one more point from the last one. Uh, Just from another, again, from another genius admin perspective, a lot of customers asked for, like, their screens back or their batteries back, their old ones that they were replaced uh, because Mm -hmm. they felt that they owned that property. Uh, Yeah, according to this agreement, and it's always been a a thing, you cannot bring your, you're kind of exchanging goods. I'm giving you a new part, I'm taking your old part. What's important about getting your screens replaced is a lot of the old screens have screen protectors on them, um, so they will not come and be replaced on your new dev- new screen, um, so they will actually just be thrown away. Some geniuses or genius admins give the courtesy of having it removed from your old screen and giving it back to you because some screen protector companies have warranties with them. But uh, just be wary. If, if you're bringing a cracked screen in to get replaced and it has a screen protector on it, I advise you to take it off before the you come to the Apple store. Yeah, it's a big thing too. We, 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 I mean, geniuses have to be smart to, I always tell people to take it off. I never brought it in the back. Yeah, never. yeah, ex- exactly. Or I would warn them, or I would warn them that, hey, this is going to crack when we open, it's going to crack. So, you know, like the, if you want to get a good screen protector, by the way, get the Belkin one in the Apple stores. They have a lifetime warranty, guys. So yep. get yep. those. Okay, so uh, Apple warrants for a period of 90 days from the date of service, that service will be performed in a competent and workmanlike manner and that all parts used to service your product will be free from defects in materials and workmanship, unless otherwise specified by Apple. Apple for further warrants to the extent permitted by law that batteries installed as part of Apple's battery replacement service for Apple portable Mac computers will be free from defects and materials and workmanship for one year from the date of service. Every part that you get replaced in your either computer or iPhone has a 90 day warranty on it. Outside of the Apple Mac batteries, they actually have a one year warranty associated to it. Now, this is not a, oh, the I cracked the screen within 90 days, it has a warranty, I can get it replaced for free. No, it's if it's a manufacturing defect or you know something just not working right that is not caused by the user, 
falls into that 90 day or one year warranty. But it has to be the original issue. Yes. It's, it, can't, it can't be like, so if you get it changed because it had a no power issue and then you get it and then the screen's like blanks out. They're not related. So technically, Apple doesn't have to cover that. Um, I'll be honest, there are ways around that, but I will tell, but that's not for me to say. Um, <laughs> which I t- but I just said it. So, uh, one thing that's interesting about the portables, um, batteries have a one year warranty on them. So, a lot of people don't know that. People think it falls under the 90 day warranty. It doesn't. Well, it's just uh, for so, the max. Uh, right. So, but a lot of people don't know that. Right, right, right. So, so yeah, one year. So, that's not bad. Uh, all right. So, this is a good one. This people. This are for. Oh, by the way, one thing it does say it says a workman like matter, isn't that kind of like, you know, not PC? Are you calling? Are you saying sexist? Yes, <laughs> it's a work person like matter, right? It should be work person. Yeah, work person. Like yeah. We, we should, have women geniuses. We should update that to. We should send that to Apple and be like, hey, I thought. I no, thought you, no. It's 2019. No, it's, <laughs> no, it's not. Screw that. I, I, see, the 90s were so good. Those times were so good. Well, it's a work man like matter. <laughs> All Times right. have changed, Will. So, Get with shut it. Shut up. <laughs> uh, no, I, I will not, especially what I see on the news. No no freaking way. Uh, <laughs> if you have not claimed your product and paid all charges due within 60 days oh, after being notified by Apple that your product has been served, Apple will consider your product abandoned and may dispose of your product in accordance with the applicable law. Okay. The best <laughs> example of this is people who are in jail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That is the best example. As weird as that sounds, people go to jail, and they don't. They have no way to get to the store. Definitely. But then they don't tell anybody about their Mac, like being stuck in the store. So, and I'll be honest, we're lenient on that sixty days because we go. We give them a lot more time. Oh, than we're that. very lenient. Yeah, I mean, so I'm only laughing at this one because I saw this policy from two my two positions at Apple, uh, from a genius admin perspective and a uh, operations. Um, Specialist, um, because we dealt with it together, um, and this I've had I have many stories about this whole leniency of the sixty day return policy and how we notify them and stuff like that. Um, so that's for another time, but yeah, this is very important, um, especially for your products that are very expensive, like your MacBooks um, or your iPhones. Like they're they're not cheap, and for you to just leave them there and not have them be claimed after sixty days, just be sent in to be torn apart and reused it's a shame and unfortunately like i said if they're expensive products so sometimes it's where the customers actually are trying to save up the money to pay for the repair if you don't tell apple be like hey can you hold it for x amount of days i need the funds to pay for it we were we were pretty accommodating to it but you just have to let us know as long as you contact the store they're not going to get rid of it what i would tell people the best way to pay this off, Apple does have a credit card in store for the Barclay card that you get like a certain amount of month to pay off. This would technically count as a payment, right? I mean, I would see that that this to um, not be a payment. I think so. I, I would think it would. I think it's anything from Apple. As long as the first purchase is a certain amount of money. So if you have a liquid damage 15-inch MacBook Pro, that costs you 1200 bucks, guys. It, it's, it's expensive, yeah. very expensive to fix. So I could completely get why you, know, you want to do that. So the last thing. If service involved... I'm reading what? this. I'm reading it. Oh, sorry. Uh, Come on, Will. You're stepping uh, on uh, my, my game. Uh, oh, Tim. Anyway, sorry, Tim. if ahead. service involves transferring information or installing software, you represent that you have the legal right to copy the information and agree to the terms of the software license, and you authorize Apple to transfer the information and accept such terms on your behalf in performing the service. Okay, yeah, so this is a... Uh, I, I just had to read it again. <laughs> awkward, awkward pause. <laughs> uh, Will, just remind me, is this a data transfer? Is this what they're talking about? No, this is this is involving... See, I'm glad you read the sentence that you have nothing to do with. And part of your job. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know what this means. It's, installing software uh, represents that what we're doing is that we're basically installing an operating system or we're erasing it. Uh, you know, and then when it talks about you authorize Apple to transfer the information, you know, basically would count under the one of the terms and conditions regarding the data transfers. Uh, so, oh, okay, okay. Really, this one's kind of like not that big of a deal. I don't think we ran into this too much, but really, it it's just comes down to data. Tr- yeah, it comes down to data transfers, and it comes down to leaving the product in the store and allowing us to install 
an operating system. So that's your terms and conditions, guys. So, I mean, you can go online on Apple.com. They put it up there for everyone to look at. Uh, they have they have all the legal stuff up there if you really want to read through it. But the reality is when you go to the Genius Bar and you scroll down that long page, you are agreeing to all these things, and you will not be able to get a lawyer to stop you from getting anywhere with that. So, so funny, funny enough, I actually had a customer come to the store and she picked up her new iPhone from the Genius Bar. She had to set up a new Apple ID for the phone, and she works in Washington D.C. for like a legal team where she has to, she fights for these people that like read don't read these documents and they end up signing and agreeing to things that they don't agree to and stuff like that, whatever. And she ends up read has to reading a lot of them. So she actually sat in a store and read the terms and conditions for signing up for an Apple ID. And she was there for almost like an hour and a half reading them, but she read it all. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, I, That's I crazy. never, I never experienced that. I would never think to read it myself. People do read it. People do read it sometimes. Uh, very rare, but people do read it. Yeah. But again, the bottom line is that you're not getting a repair unless you accept it. So that's the bottom line, guys. So that'll do it for this week. Uh, so I thought I hope you guys liked that breakdown of of everything. We really dove into the Genius Bar and the Apple Store the last three weeks. Uh, you know, it's been great. And then in two weeks, guys, we are going to have the big news. All the new Apple stuff is going to be coming out. Make sure you guys check out thinkdifferentpodcast.com. That's our website. You can check out all the articles we put up there. Also, check us out on Launchpad DM. That is our official platform where we are hosting our podcast on. And yeah, they've been great to us. All the They've been really great to us, posting us on there, featuring us on there. So thank you to them. But we're on every platform, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, TuneIn, Google. Hey, if you have a Zoom, now you're probably going to get on the Zoom. <laughs> Check us out on all the platforms that podcasts are available. And please leave us a review. Remember, you are getting a tremendous deal. You are getting a $10 gift card. All you got to do is take a screenshot before you send the review in. Send it to thinkdifferentpod at gmail.com, and you will get announced next week as the winner of a $10 iTunes gift card that we will send to you. Yeah, fun, fun. Like Will mentioned, that's that's free iCloud storage for 10 months. Yep, that's right. So for you people that don't back up your phone and don't want to pay the 50 gigs, now you have a reason to. All right, guys, <laughs> that will do it for this week here at the Think Different Podcast. Thank you very much. Make sure you add us at Think Different Pod on Twitter. Check us out on Facebook at the Think Different Podcast as well. Instagram. And also... Instagram with our emojis, and then check us out also on YouTube where we put some of our clips up there. So thank you guys. Enjoy your weekend. And Tim, I hope you sleep very well tonight because Tim is ready to go on his next vacation. <laughs> I'm actually going to Hershey this weekend, so I'm excited. Thank you guys for coming. <laughs> Peace out. <laughs>